Okay, so I think it's about time to start. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to join our session today. So our topic today is PADIS, which is actually the first uh, open source framework for privacy enhancing technologies from TikTok. So in this talk, we want to show you basically what is the privacy enhancing technologies, what are their potential uh, applications, and what PADIS can help you with. So a little bit about me, I'm a research scientist in a Privacy Innovation Lab at TikTok. My name is Lu Donghang. And uh, this is basically, let's start with some uh, background about why we want to use privacy enhancing technologies. And as we see, we are living in the era of big data. As long as there are data, there are a lot of meaningful things that we can do. For example, data analysis can help with decision making, with uh, driving innovation or risk management. As long as there are data, there are a lot of things that we can do. However, meanwhile, data privacy actually is another problem. It's getting more and more attention right now. People's awareness of the data privacy has increased uh, during the year. And meanwhile, we see a lot of privacy regulations are released. For example, in Europe, now we have the GDPR. And uh, in California, there are CCPA. And uh, recently, the similar uh, re re regulation laws are also released on Singapore as well. And if you also realize uh, in the mobile operating systems, for example, right now, if you install some apps in your phone, you will realize the system will notice you whether you want to choose to opt out of the data tracking. So if you choose to opt out, then basically the app developer will have no access to your data anymore. So all this shows that people are paying more attention to the uh, data privacy and um, which is actually a good thing. However, in many use cases for data analysis, it requires data from multiple parties. And if the data itself is kind of sensitive, it immediately raises privacy concern. So we will share two examples here. The first one is healthcare research, and the second one is as measurement to show you uh, why data privacy matters here. So the first example is the healthcare research. And uh, in this example, we have, let's say we have five hospitals, and each hospital may have their patient information. And the goal here is we want them to collaboratively uh, train some models with the patient data. And of course, patient data is considered as highly sensitive information. If the hospital just uh, share this data with other hospitals in plain text, this immediately raises privacy concern. And so this is where the privacy enhancing technologies can help. So now the first step is, as you can see, instead of sending the patient information in plain text, there is a scheme called secret sharing schemes. So basically, secret sharing schemes can split your data into pieces. And with each piece, you actually have no idea what is the original data. But uh, with all the pieces together, you can actually recover them. So what hospital do is they will secret share data, secret share their patient information with each other. So uh, there will be a guarantee, for example, at least uh, four or five of them getting together, then they can recover the secret. But uh, in this case, basically, uh, one single in hospital will have no information about what is the patient uh, data from other hospitals. However, with another privacy enhancing technology called secure multi-party computation, you can still do meaningful computations over these secret shares. So what they do is they can train a machine learning models here using just the secret shares of patient data. And the good thing is the result trained model is also in the form of secret share. So actually, one single hospital has no information about what is the model. But if five hospitals collaborate, they can still do the model inference. So this is the first example where the uh, privacy enhancing technologies can help. You see now uh, the same computation task is finished. And meanwhile, the data privacy is still preserved. So the second example is about as measurement. And in this setting, we actually have two parties. The first party is called the advertiser, and uh, the second party is called the publisher. So advertisers are the parties who want to put advertisement and let people buy their product. And the publishers are usually uh, social media platforms, such as TikTok, such as Facebook. So they will uh, forward the advertisements to the users. So the idea is that if the users find the advertisement to be interesting, they will go to the advertiser's shop or the website and make the purchase. And what, what uh, as measurements wants to do is it wants to measure how much money were made 
uh, because of this ads campaign. Uh, basically, we want to know how many people watch the advertisement first, then go to the advertiser's shop and make the purchase. We also want to know how much money were earned in this way. So if we abstract this problem like in the simplest form, we can think of both parties each having a database. So on the ads publisher side, there will be a database uh, recording the user ID. So this basically means Alice watched the advertisement on timestamp one. This impression time basically means uh, the time that they watched the advertisement. And on the advertiser side, there is a similar database with the user ID. Conversion time basically means the time that uh, the user made the purchase, and the value is the amount of money that they spent. So as you see, if the advertiser and the publisher can join the table together, this evaluation is very simple. We simply just join the table using the uh, user ID. Then we decide whether the conversion time is later than the impression time. Like, user have to first watch the ads, then make the purchase. If the order is reversed, it makes no sense. If that's the case, we just add the value to the final result. So this is, in general, this is the simplest version of how ads measurement do. And if you see, if we, if we have all the data in plain text, this is pretty easy. And actually, this is, is also what happened before 2017. So here we want to show an evolution of the ads measurement API. As you see before 2017, actually there is no regulations about privacy, and also the cross-app tracking is quite easy with third-party cookies. So the advertiser and the publisher can easily uh, build this joint table together. And in this figure, we want, we want to show this evolution. So you see two axes here. The x-axis is the utility, which means how accurate this ads measurement could be. And the y-axis is privacy, basically. Um, before the year 2017, you see that your utility is maximized because everything is very precise, but the privacy is basically zero. Uh, here, the privacy issue is the publisher will have all the information uh, from the advertiser, and the advertiser will have all the user activity information on the publisher. So, during uh, around on the year 2020, there are a lot of regulations uh, coming out, and uh, meanwhile, the third-party cookies also becomes not available. So basically, this, all the all these related platform tracking APIs becomes not available anymore. So you see, we see a huge drop on the utility here. This is because this computation can be uh, cannot be done anymore. Basically, you get zero outcome. But the privacy has increased because, of course, uh, there is no computation, there is no data sharing. The privacy has its best place. Then what we want to do here is we want to achieve the best world of uh, the both part. We want to achieve the best of the utility and privacy. Basically, similar to the uh, hospital example, we want to still evaluate this computation, but this time we want to make sure the privacy is also preserved. So, for example, if you are the advertiser, advertiser should have no information about the user behavior on the publisher. So if this is the view of the advertiser, it should have no information here. This information should only be available to the uh, publisher. So similarly, on the publisher side, it is kind of symmetric. Uh, publisher will only know its own data, but has no idea about the advertiser parts of data. And the computation is still, we want to compute this final as measurement outcome. So this can be done using privacy enhancing technology. We will show you how to do that uh, very soon. So uh, the previous two examples is, uh, example, are examples where the privacy enhancing technologies can help. And in general, uh, there are a lot of protocols that can be considered as uh, privacy enhancing technologies or PETs. They could be as simple as some basic encryptions or cryptographic hash functions. Or there are also some applied crypto protocols, such as secure multi-party computation. Or if you are a fan of hardware, there are hardware-based uh, secure solutions, such as trusted execution environment, like SGX or TDS from Intel. And the other uh, chip companies also have their own hardware solutions for uh, trusted hardware. And differential privacy is another one which is a very interesting technology for you to publish a data set with uh, users' privacy considered. 
Uh, we have many of these privacy enhancing technologies. So now I want to introduce our um, framework, which is called Pedis. We want it to be a one-stop solution for both cryptos and pets. So it, will con it consists of plenty of uh, cryptographic primitives and also applied crypto solutions, multi-party solutions. Also, we wanted to complete uh, to provide a complete tool chain for people with different backgrounds. By that, I mean we provide different kinds of uh, tools for people with different purpose. For example, if you are a cryptographic researcher or if you are a cryptographic expert, you want to build your protocols from scratch, then we provide all these cryptographic primitives here. So as you see, these are some very fundamental building blocks for crypto like AES encryption, random generator, cryptographic cache, homomorphic encryption. So all these little tools are like, if you want to build everything from scratch, this is a good start. Uh, and let's say if you are an engineer who, have, uh, who does not have a very good understanding about crypto, but you want to build some privacy solutions, then they also have some higher layer of protocols, such as general purpose two-party computation, you only need to figure out what are the computing parties here, what are the data you want to protect, what are the computation you want to do. Then you feed it to this framework, this framework will do the rest for you. And if your computation task just by accident, it's a very specific protocol such as um, you want to compute the intersection of two data set, then they have some uh, specialized uh, two-party protocols to achieve that and uh, something like private set intersection and private information retrieval. So these are also included in our framework. Uh, with that said, this is kind of the architecture of the framework. You see on the very bottom level, these are our cryptographic primitives. Here we have elliptic curve, uh, AES encryption, pseudo-random generator, hash. And on the second layer, this is our protocol collection. This basically is uh, collection of many two-party protocols, which will use all these crypto primitive as the building block. And let's say if you have no idea about crypto, you just, you just want to build some applications with privacy considered, we also have this Python interface. So actually you can write your application just using Python. We have a compiler and it, it will compile the Python code uh, to fit. It will find the best solution for you and compile it to be the low level actual secure code. So with that being said, we actually divide our, uh, our framework into four repos, uh, each with different purpose. The first one is the Pedis Solo. It uh, generally includes all the fundamental crypto building blocks. So this is not a complete list. I just want to show you an example like what's included here. You see for each functionality, like for the pseudo-random generator, you actually have multiple choices that you can choose. They have their own different trade-offs. And Verse is a, a repo that we want to include uh, uh, two-party protocols. So, so far, we only have the obvious transfer protocols, which is the fundamental building block of secure multi-party computation. In the future, we will uh, add more here. So do it is our main uh, basically, it's our main repo, which has the general purpose secure two-party computation protocol. Uh, and uh, there are many secret sharing schemes implemented. We also implement homomorphic encryption. So they have their own trade-off between the computation and communication. You can pick the proper one uh, given your specific application. And of course, we also support the conversion between different sharing schemes and homomorphic encryption. So if your program is like the first half is, uh, needs less communication and the second half needs less computation, you can also combine them with different schemes here. And finally, setups is basically the proto uh, basically contain the protocols that we want to design for specialized uh, set options. And as we also mentioned, we have a Python interface here. So in general, well, what's happening is we build a virtual machine and the user can just write their code using Python. On this virtual machine, we have a compiler that will co compile the Python code into the actual machine code. And this machine code will be uh, matched with the actual low level C++ code. So in this way, you can write with Python, it is uh, user friendly and meanwhile, uh, the performance is also guaranteed. 
So this is a simple example for, uh, so now let's say if we want to do a linear regression, uh, then if you just use NumPy in Python, this could be as simple as this one line of code. And if you use our framework, uh, they, there is a little bit more, but I think it's also very clean. You see, since this is multi-party protocol, now you need to initialize some network. Then you need to initialize our uh, secure engine. Then the next stage is very simple. You just set the data you want to compute. Then you do the computation. So you see this right-hand side code is very similar to the left-hand side, uh, which is very friendly to everyone to use. So now uh, we can see, um, I want to show you basically with this path is ready, what kind of applications could it solve? Of course, it can uh, help solve the uh, healthcare uh, analysis, as we mentioned, those five hospital example. There, they can just use the secret sharing schemes and uh, um, secure multi-party computation to do that. And here, the as measurement can also be solved similarly. Uh, as we see in this example, we have two databases. What we want to do is basically we want to do a joint table. So you, we want to find the intersection of the user ID. Then after that, we can join the table and compute some follow-up computation. So this naturally can be divided into two steps. The first step is a matching phase where we uh, compute the intersection side. This can be done by using private set intersection protocol. So the security guarantee is that you, the both party will have no idea about which element is in the, in, the, in the intersection or not. Then the second step is basically you will do some follow-up computation where we compute if the conversion time is larger than the impression time. If that's the case, we just add this value to the final result. So you see with Pattis, uh, we can finish the, we can uh, solve the first part using PSI protocols and we can solve the second part using general purpose two-party computation. Another application of Pattis also includes the contact matching. So the idea is uh, if you are using TikTok, you want to find if, there, if your friends in your contact list are also using TikTok or not. So in this setting, of course, TikTok site will have a database containing all the contacts of users who use TikTok. And uh, the simplest way is the phone can just send the contact list to the TikTok server, and the server will find the match and return it back. And of course, this immediately raises uh, privacy concern because it is not good to ask users to send their contact information to the server. This should not be allowed. So in this example, actually, we, this is exactly a private set intersection protocol. If you think of the user's uh, contact list as a set and TikTok's database as another set, you, you are essentially want to compute the intersection of two sets without revealing anything else. So the TikTok server should have no idea about any contact that is not in the intersection. And uh, similarly, the user should have no information about any TikTok user that is not in his contact list. So this is exactly what can be done using uh, PSI, and the PSI protocol is uh, a sub-protocol supported by Pattis. So yeah, I think that's generally everything I want to talk about today. The general takeaway is the Pattis provide a very completed uh, tool chains if you want to build your own applications, and it is friendly to use for people with different expertise as we provide different layers of protocols to use. And also, uh, Pattis welcome contributions. So if you're interested, feel free to use it and let, let us know. We are more than happy to discuss this with you. And let's make it better together. So yeah, that's everything we have today. Do we have any questions? Oh, that is actually a very good question. So let's think about this example. In this example, we have five hospitals or five parties. 
And when they do the computation, actually there is no third part, uh, no sixth uh, party that's doing the computation. It only happens between these five hospitals. So it's not like we offload some computation to a third party and that can be trusted. So this is in actually an interactive protocol happening only between a, uh, like the computing parties and uh, the security guarantee is no one, there is no single individual that can see the actual data. So all the data are in the form of secret sharing, so the privacy is guaranteed. Uh, they can do each, uh, they, all the hospitals will do all the computations. It's just that they only uh, hold a share or a piece of the data. For example, if I chunk the data into five pieces, each hospital only have one piece. But with this one piece, they will do the whole computation. Oh, that's, this is another very good question. So uh, for the general purpose secure multi-party computation, there are two uh, threat models. The first model is you assume parties are behaving honestly. Uh, that means the pro protocols are correctly followed. And in that setting, we have very fast protocols. And the second setting is, as you mentioned, what if, let's say there is a bad guy here, this hospital is not following the protocol, providing some random results. And in that case, there are another series of protocols that can provide this malicious secure property. So basically, we can either detect them or we can, if we have enough duplication here, we can even correct the error and find out who is doing wrong. Yes. Yeah, so actually this also falls into the category of malicious secure because malicious secure protocol allows a party to do malicious any behavior, like any malicious behavior. And one of the behavior is actually it just disappears with its data. So in that case, the general idea you can think of it as if we have a sufficient duplication. For example, if uh, we set some kind of threshold such that as long as four hospitals get together, they can recover the data, then we can allow one hospital to just disappear. So there's kind of some duplication mechanisms here. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so far, this is an open source research project, but we will very soon we will see use, use scenarios in TikTok as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If no more questions, thanks everyone for attending. <laughs>